Welcome to Make Life Fun. I'm your host, Josie Wheaton, founder of Backroads Coaching, where we pave our own path to self-acceptance. Think of me as your self-love bestie, here to guide you, support you as you let go, rewrite the thoughts and beliefs that are blocking you from loving yourself and living your best life. This season, we are talking business, pleasure, love, money, and of course, all things motherhood. This show is sponsored by 35 Ways to Brighten Up Your Day. I created this ebook that you can download instantly at brightenyourdays.com to help you have more fun and create more joy by building the habits of taking simple, intentional, empowering action every day, bite-sized inspiration and action steps to brighten your day. It starts with you deciding you're going to be happy and have more fun, and this will lead you to a brighter future. Get it today for yourself or someone special in your life and support the show by going to brighterdays.com. Welcome back to the Make Life Fun Show. I am so happy that you're with us today. I have my beautiful guest, Emily Hardy, on the show today, and I'm so excited to have you here, Emily. Welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited for this conversation today. Yes, me too. Well, let's start. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us what is lighting you up right now, and yeah, just what are you passionate about right now? Yes, well, I am Emily. I am just a really multi-passionate person, but one of the things that I absolutely love is supporting mothers. I am a motherhood support coach. I have a podcast called the Worthy Mother Podcast, and I am a mom of two little boys, a four and a half year old, and my baby turns two in, I think, two, three days from recording. So I am in the thick of it, you know, doing the whole mom thing. I also have a second business as an instructional designer. So I am just living life as a mother and working towards supporting mothers while I go through that with them, right? I just really love talking about all things mom guilt, all things that impact the motherhood experience. You know, we all have different experiences as moms, but there's some key pieces and just in society and in the world and in the messages we receive that we can talk about and we can start to kind of bring awareness to things that impact us and really make a difference in our experiences. So that is where my heart is. I just love having these conversations. I'm so excited to be here and get to just share and learn from you and all of that good stuff. All of the good stuff. (laughs) Well, let's dive in a little bit. Thank you for letting us know a little bit about you. At the beginning of this, you were telling me that you love talking about how we can't do it all. Yes. And that message resonates with me from my head to my toes. Because at the beginning of motherhood, I thought, I'm going to be like this badass mom. I'm going to yeah. put on this man cape and Captain Marvel, this, <laughs> this mom thing. And I'm just going to do it all because that's what was modeled for me. That's what I saw growing up. My mom worked. She took care of five kids and she looked like she did it effortlessly. And I was like, let's go. But I quickly found out that wasn't the case. So I would love to hear how you came to this like realization for yourself that we can't do it all because truly it's so true yeah well so I had my first son when I was 23 and I was going back to school to get my teaching credential in a state of transition in life you know just with other things. And then all of a sudden, oh, I'm having a baby. And this was not the way it was expected to happen. And so from the get go, you know, I'll be honest, I had a lot of help. We had family support, family nearby, and I knew that I couldn't do it all myself. Mm. You know, I think that was a, a big kind of differentiating piece to my entrance into motherhood. Whereas, you know, somebody who maybe has planned for so long, they know exactly when they want to have kids, there might be this expectation of, oh, I'm going to be able to do it all. And so it was a little bit different in that regard. However, you know, there's still, I'm still here in this world that we live in where I also kind of figured that when I had kids, because, you know, it's something I always wanted. It was always the, the goal was to, to have babies. And, you know, there's, there's just certain things that I figured I would just get good at. You know, like you become a mom, you can, I mean, what are some of the things you can find things for your kids when they lose them? You can juggle a bunch of things at once. That's something I've always, you know, had a hard time with is kind of even just like physically holding a bunch of things and managing it all. Just these things that you see moms being great at. They're just, they're moms, right? You just are, if you're a mom, you're automatically good at these things. 
And I pretty quickly realized like that's not actually how it works. You are, obviously you go through a lot of changes when you become a mom. There's a lot of things that happen. And in some ways you're a different person because you now have this this little life you're taking care of and this new purpose and these different things. But really it's, you're the same person you were nine months prior. Right? And so I think just coming to that realization was interesting for me, like realizing, okay, this, I'm not going to be good at this all just because I now have a kid. When my second was born, I dealt with some mental health things and actually like addressed it and, you know, went and saw a therapist and did all the things. And it kind of set me on this journey. That experience set me on this journey of kind of really accepting myself for who I am, flaws and all as a person and as a mother. And it's really in that where I have felt so called to help other moms who feel that weight, feel that pressure that they have to be doing it all, knowing that I can accept myself and I don't do it all. Nobody can do it all. And, and we really just, we have to learn to accept it because that's the only solution there. Mm-hmm. There's no like just getting better at it all and being perfect. That's not an option. <laughs> 100%. That is not an option. And that is like the road to burnout and exhaustion, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. I love that you bring up that you, after your second child, you had to reach out to get some help. Mm -hmm. How did you get to that point to know to ask for help? Because what I hear from a lot of moms is they feel, it's almost like that mom guilt. They feel guilty asking for help. They feel like asking for help is a weakness, right? And so I would love to know the mindset kind of behind, I'm not okay. I need support. I love talking about this because it really is something that in my own journey, it was hearing other people talk about their experiences that kind of pushed me to to seek help and to even realize that that was something that I needed. I dealt with anxiety, I mean, for most of my life. I was that kid who would get stomach aches when big things were happening, you know, things like that. But as I entered into adulthood, it became more of a problem, but I never, it never was something I couldn't just deal with, right? It was, so I pushed through. And even after my first son was born, I would have, you know, anxiety and depression and things like that, but it never never was quote bad enough to seem obvious enough to need to get help. And that just wasn't what was normalized for me. So after my second son was born, I would get these feelings of kind of like, it just, everything felt doomy. Like it felt like doom. And it wasn't the kind of anxiety that when you look up postpartum anxiety and, you know, there's talks about like not being able to sleep because you're worried about the baby. Like it was my second son. It wasn't really manifesting in those ways that I was seeing when you, you know, when you're getting screened for mental health things, that kind of thing. But it really, for me was seeing, I, there's someone I follow on Instagram who had her second child around the same time, like an influencer who had her second child at the same time. And she was going through a lot of postpartum anxiety things and sharing about it and sharing like she was having a lot of kind of rage feelings and these like really difficult to admit feelings that I think a lot of us really do face in motherhood. It's like when we actually talk about it, it's like that's a fairly common experience. Um, But I had, it was a lot of things around feeling really upset and getting really triggered really easily and seeing someone else express that and how they were dealing with it allowed me to realize like, okay, this is actually what's going on with me. It's very similar. What's happening to me is what's happening to this person that I'm, I'm hearing share about this. And so I called my doctor and yeah, it turns out, I mean, I was definitely dealing with postpartum anxiety, postpartum depression, and I was able to get help, you know, with therapy and medication and you know, there's, however it works for you, getting help is so crucial. And if we don't even realize it's an option, we don't even realize it's like something that we can ask for, Mm -hmm. then, I mean, you can't get it, right? If you don't know to ask for it, you can't get it. Exactly. Thank you so much for sharing that because I've heard from so many moms that I should have had help. I should have reached out. And so, like you said, you had to see somebody else go out there and explain it for you to be like, okay, I'm right there too. So thank you so much for sharing that. And have you been doing your worthy, you call it the worthy mothers podcast. Yeah. So on the worthy mothers podcast, how did you come about that journey of, I would love to hear that journey. (laughs) So I, I really love like reflecting on, I think we all have like these amazing stories of where we get to where we are. I was an elementary school teacher. And when my second son was born, he was born in February and I was out on maternity leave, you know, through the summer, the school year ended and I continued to be home with the kids during the summer. 
And for me personally, just being the caretaker all day, every day with my kids, it's not the most ideal thing for me to be doing all day, every day. It's just not what fills me up in that way. I want to be like mentally stimulated in different ways and things like that. You know, we all have things that like are needs to us. And so I was getting into, you know, month six of being home with the kids and decided that I was going to learn to start a blog. And I did, I, I learned and dove into it and started a blog on motherhood and supporting moms. And it was just in that little seed of, mm-hmm. of figuring out that this was something I was so passionate about and then investing in my own education with learning about motherhood and learning about like the actual sociological impacts that or the sociological factors that impact moms and things like that, that have just like, this is my life's passion. Mm -hmm. Talking about motherhood, talking about how as women we experience motherhood. And so I just, I mean, it's always, I love listening to podcasts. It was always a dream to like start a podcast. I never knew what I would have a podcast on, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, five years ago, (laughs) but it just has all fallen into place. I'm so passionate about talking about motherhood and Mm -hmm. never run out of things to say. There's so many incredible people out there too that have really wonderful messages to share. So yeah, well, thank you for taking us on that journey of being that mom who decides I get my cup filled up by doing something like this and it's okay. Yeah. It's okay that this is what fills up my cup. Because a lot of us are thrown into motherhood, even though we want it, we're thrown into it in a way where we're like, okay, this is it now. We're just going to be moms. And so saying like, I need a little bit more stimulation than just staying at home speaks volumes because I know there's a lot of moms that are listening to this that are, that have that little seed, right? That Mm -hmm. they are like, I want to do something, but I'm a mom now. And so I would love for you to speak on that, on like the little mindset shifts that we have to get to in order to get to a place where we're like, even just dabbling, even that baby stuff. Yeah. Well, I think one of the most powerful things that we can do is to reflect on how, you know, we have these little kids, we have these little children in front of us, regardless of how old they are. And we think about what we want for them in their lives. And if we can kind of put ourselves back into that position, right? Like we were not that long ago, little kids with these whole lives in front of us, everything that you have done up until the point of having children, right? Has been a part of you and a part of your journey and a part of your personality and your, like who you are, right? When you have children, when you have kids, it doesn't just all get replaced. And so really like understanding that piece of it, understanding that we are complex people. Our children are going to be a huge part of our lives. Whether you are someone who wants to stay home with your kids and just pour into them, and that is that is life-giving to you to be doing that regularly, whether you choose to go back to work, whether you have to go back to work, whatever your life looks like, whatever you want, whatever you need, you are still an individual person beyond that role as a mom. And your kids may impact every single aspect of you but it's not, it doesn't take away from you being you. So I think that is really a powerful way to think about it. But I also think that there's there's a lot of value in understanding that we all have different needs, right? We have our basic needs. We have the things that we need to survive, you know, food, water, shelter, safety, all those things, right? Like there's things we need to survive, but we also have other needs. And so if our basic needs are being met, there's other things we need. We need to belong. We need to have relationships with people. If you think about the hierarchy of needs, there's also once we're getting those needs met, there's things that have to do with like who we are as a person. And so when you feel like you need something more, you need something different, there's like a pull to try something new or to have something for yourself to expand your mind in some way, whatever it is, right? I think understanding that that's a need, understanding that that's something that you are like allowed to have and it's a normal human thing to be called to something different. It kind of gives a little bit of permission to say, you know what, like this is a good thing that I'm being called to this. And if I am able to get that need met, I'm probably going to be able to show up for my kids in a way that I am happier about or model for them like the beauty of being a human. (laughs) So I think, yeah, it's it's, it's these mindset shifts that we can yeah. kind of make and kind of take on when we're struggling with those things. 
Yeah, absolutely. Motherhood is all consuming, right? Yeah. And so to have something that is just for you brings up the thought for me of like worthiness, like yes. moms not feeling like they are worthy of it yet. Like they have to wait until this happens. They have to get to this milestone. So I would love for you, especially because your name of your podcast is the Worthy Mothers Podcast. So I'd love for you to talk a little bit on worthiness, especially with moms. Yeah. I mean, I think you, the way you just said that, it captures it so beautifully. I think we as mothers, and I think this is something that a lot of people in general mm -hmm. do deal with, but I think as mothers, we often feel like we are not worthy of our own acceptance. We are not worthy of our own love. We are not worthy of being the mothers to our children. Like whatever it is that we feel unworthy of. And there's a lot of reasons for it. You know, I've kind of spoken about how we feel like we should be a certain way, but when we feel like we are supposed to be this perfect mother, whatever that means to you, you're not going to be that. You're going to fail. You're a human. You're flawed. You're, you're not going to be able to achieve some perfection that doesn't exist, right? Because what is it? If you really break down what being a perfect mom means to you, it's probably not even possible. Even if it's like, okay, I could get there and be miserable, but it's not even about that because what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to like provide for your family and also stay home and be with your children 100% of the time and also take care of yourself and look a certain way and like all these things. It's like, it's not possible. <sighs> But when we put that on ourselves, and we all do, we all put some version of that on ourselves because we all grew up in a world <laughs> where that is put on us. And so if we're not like keenly aware that that's happening and that a lot of these standards we're holding ourselves to aren't necessarily our own, then there's kind of this part of us that feels like we are failing because we are, right? We're not reaching that that goal, that standard that we're aiming for, even, you know, subconsciously. And that, that leads to feelings of not being worthy. Like I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not doing enough, whatever it is. And yes, we can improve. Yes, we can be on a journey of growth. We can always want to be doing better for ourselves and for our children, but we also have to accept where we are and know that it is enough. We are enough. And it, that's really challenging to do. It's really challenging to do when you are getting messages and you are internalizing things and you are telling yourself that you're not enough when that's the belief, the, the underlying belief that has maybe even always been there. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, the conversations are so important just to be like constantly talking about this and thinking about it. I think that really is so crucial because a lot of it is awareness of how we are impacted externally. Did you go through any sort of worthiness in motherhood for yourself? Did you have a journey to feeling, feeling like you're enough in motherhood and the whole new journey that comes with it? Or was it for you an effortless kind of, here I am? Something that I think is so important to, to say, you know, as somebody who kind of speaks on motherhood in a way of like, you know, I've studied motherhood. I, I, this is something that I'm so passionate about and have learned so much about, but in my day-to-day -day life, I still struggle with these things. Again, it doesn't just stop. <laughs> we, we live in this world and I know that I will very likely never not struggle with these things because Again, it's a, a lot of that, like even giving myself grace and that's such a big part of it. But knowing that like there's times where I'm like, I'm failing at this and it doesn't feel good, but knowing that that's okay is really important. I think for me though, coming into feeling worthy of my own love and my own like efforts and things like that really happened when I kind of decided it was really part of that journey of starting the blog and things like that. I had gone to school to be a teacher. I was teaching elementary school and I had just kind of done the things that I thought I was supposed to do growing up. You know, I did really well in school and didn't know what I wanted to be by the time I graduated college. So I went to college, changed majors a few times, ended up after getting a job at elementary school and then becoming a teacher. Like that's kind of how it went. And I love students. I love kids. I loved my students. I love teaching. I mean, I'm here, you know, I'm, <laughs> I love doing this. I'm an educator, but I also had never really given myself the opportunity to dream bigger. That just wasn't something I felt like I knew how to do. And I think a lot of that does stem from like not feeling worthy enough to have these like big lofty goals that feel out of reach. And so for me, I think realizing that that was an option and then realize, like allowing myself to just doubt 
dabble with that, right? To dabble with having dreams, having goals. And a lot of that did come with working through mental health things and giving myself the space to think differently and just just all of that. But for me, it really has been a lot about allowing myself to see different possibilities for myself. You know, I think pretty early on, I was like, I think I'm going to write a book one day and like, we'll see what happens, but I think I'm going to write a book. And that was like the first time I'd really allowed myself to, to think bigger, like to think, okay, I could start a podcast and you know what? Like it can just be for me. Things like that, that I had kind of limited myself from those shoulds. That was a huge part of my journey. And again, I'm still on it. And it's something that I still am going through, right? It's, it's a (laughs) daily thing. Yes. But I do feel like I'm grounded very much in knowing that I am worthy of my love. Even if some days I don't feel it, it's that knowing that, okay, that's what I need to work on then. That's the thing that I need to work towards. And so, yeah, I think finding that self-worth is, it's huge. And it's, yes. It is. Yes. It kind of impacts everything else. I would love to know, because you said you have dove head first into learning about motherhood. And I would love to know if there was anything shocking you found. What was the most shocking thing that you found in your research, in your findings of motherhood? I'm almost finished with a certification to be a motherhood studies practitioner with a woman named Dr. Sophie Brock. She's a really awesome sociologist who does really amazing work in educating people who work with mothers in different capacities. But we talk a lot about, in the program I went through, we talked a lot about the perfect mother myth and this ideal mother that we strive for. And I think one of the most interesting things, and I've I've kind of even reflected on my story with this, but how the way we become mothers, the further we are from that, like, quote, perfect ideal, sometimes the easier it can be for us to kind of escape it a little bit, that ideal. And so for me, I think a big part of why my journey has been the way it is and why it's been, why I can say so confidently, like, we can't do it all is because I became a mom in the way that I did, where like, I relied on other people for help. And that just has been really eye-opening to me. It's something that I've reflected on a lot, knowing that I had help from the beginning. And so, and it was something that I truly needed. So I've always known I need help. Whereas, you know, someone who feels like I've prepared for this, I am ready to go. And it's like, you're never prepared for it. That's just not how it is. Like you can wait until you're, you know, 40 and you've got everything in line and all these things. And it's, then you have a baby and it's, you're still, it's your new mom, right? Like, I think that to me was a really interesting piece of it. And there's so many things, you know, there's so many factors to that, that can be taken for different people and different experiences, but yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. Your parenting style. I would love to talk. I'm so into what you're saying. Yes. (laughs) What is your parenting style? Has it changed over the course of your motherhood journey or has it been kind of consistent? Such a good question. And I will be a hundred percent honest. It is something I'm figuring out daily, which I mean, I think we all, that's just a part of <laughs> being a parent, but I try not to label my parenting style. I do take a lot of the, I guess the essence of gentle parenting, you know, I do really feel like teaching emotional skills and, you know, the coping skills that come along with that is so important. And as an educator, as someone who formerly taught elementary school, I know there's so much value in that. We have to, as people be safe, we have to have our safe, we have to feel safe. We have to feel safe to express ourselves and feel safe to feel things to be able to like then learn anything and cope with things. I really value that in my parenting. My four and a half year old is very different than me as a person. He is very strong-willed, very, he has an energy to him that we can really butt heads a lot. And he, he just has a hard time with no's sometimes. I mean, which I think a lot of four and a half year olds do, but he just is, I mean, there's times where I'm like, I cannot relate to this kid. I don't like, you are so not who I was when I was four and a half and not who I am now. I am learning something every day. And there are a lot of days where I'm like, I hate the way that I handled that. Like I, that was not, and I don't even know how I would handle it differently, but that I think the, the key there is like knowing that I have to give myself grace in that because I want them to learn, I want my kids to learn that they are also going to make mistakes and no one's perfect and when I yell like that's I'm human and I'm dealing with my own things I'm not I didn't grow out of my own you know emotional limitations I'm I'm still working on those I'm still learning those things so yeah that's yeah, <laughs> that's no, a little bit you. about me and parenting yeah thank you for sharing that with us because it's so real and we're all going through it we're all yes. every day and what I love about what you said is feeling 
the feelings, yes. teaching our kids that emotional capacity. I would love, I mean, any tips you have on teaching your kids to, because especially like you said, being yes. a school teacher, how important it is to be able to release your emotions, especially with not the hitting, not the punching or the kicking yes. or the throwing stuff. Yes. I know I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are not. <laughs> Oh, and it's, it is so, and I think that is so like, just like saying that like kids can be, they can deal with things in those ways that are not ideal. And I really don't think there's a perfect way to handle a kid hitting you or handle a kid throwing things at you. You know, we hear suggestions on how to handle it. There's lots of different methods of handling things like that. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's like, I can't let you keep hitting me and me talking to you is not going to calm you down. (laughs) So it's, there's so many like factors to it. Kids are learning. I think for me, a big piece is trying to teach the skills for calming ourselves down, calming our body down when we are not in it. We have this like cute Sesame Street book that talks about like, you know, recovering from different emotions that are not pleasant, right? That are hard to handle. And there's a part where I think it's Cookie Monster and Elmo, they're doing belly breathing. So we do a lot of things like that, whether it works for my son when he's, you know, feeling like he wants a sweet treat and he's been told no, that's a different story. But there's definitely been times where I'm losing it, right? I get super upset about something and my son will come over to me and remind me to do belly breath. So it's like, you know, they take it in. It's just a journey and it's teaching them those things, like not necessarily because they need to know it right now, but we are teaching them those skills as they grow older and as it becomes less and less acceptable for them to throw something at someone when they're mad, you know, they're learning those things. I mean, I remember when I taught third grade, I had a student who would get kind of physically aggressive with, with other kids. And I remember telling him and this, just the look on his face of like, oh, cause I think, you know, he'd been told like, that's bad. Mm. It's bad. But I told him, yeah, sometimes I get really angry and I feel like I just want to hit whoever I'm angry at. And I was like, I don't, I did learn the skills, but just, I think that reminder that like, we all feel like that sometimes, right? We all feel like we just want to like throw something or just, it's like, it's just coming out of us, that anger or shouting. We have hopefully learned to manage those things, right? Like that's... (laughs) As adults, you can't hit someone. You can't throw something at someone. But I think having that in mind when we're dealing with our children, that like we like, oh, I actually can relate to what you're feeling right now. I can totally relate to that. And having that grace with them, knowing that it's normal to feel those things and to feel like I have to deal with this situation that I'm unhappy about and I don't feel comfortable in. And they they may not be dealing with it in a way that is like appropriate as an adult or even as a child, but we have to like give them the skills and the grace to know that that's, it doesn't mean anything about them as a person. Yep. And I love that you brought that up, that if a kid comes to you and says, it's time for you to belly breathe too. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Because it's so true. We think they're not listening, but most of the time they're hearing us. They're just not quite putting it clicking it all the pieces yeah. together yet. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. I would love to talk a little bit about motherhood and business comes up yeah. a little bit when you were speaking of like the different work that you're doing, because you're not just podcasting, you're also doing organizing as well. So yes. how do you tend to manage all that? I know you said you get a lot yes. of help and that's yeah. something I'm sure that we all need if we're going to be doing that. Absolutely. I'd just like to hear from you in your own words. <laughs> well, I mean, this is where that message, we can't do it all, comes in loud and clear. First of all, I do not have it all figured out by any means. And with, I mean, I'm sure motherhood is always changing. I'm sure your kids are changing from 10 to 11 and 16 to 17. Like it's all, we're always changing, but especially when they're so little, the, you know, two year old and a four and a half year old, it really changes monthly, like their capacity for being independent and things like that. So I I try and think of it as like knowing that like my plan may not always work and being okay with that, but we have them. I'm home. I'm working from home. I have an instructional design business and then my motherhood support, you know, pieces. We have our kids in preschool daycare. My oldest son goes four half days a week. And then my youngest goes two half days and he'll be going up to four soon enough. And they love it. And it's, I don't feel guilty about it at all because they're getting so much love and socialization and they're learning and just all these things. But it's so important to acknowledge, like they, they go somewhere. That's like a really 
I don't do it all with them here. And then when I do, I'm not pretending that I can give them all my attention and also give all my attention to something else. You know, I do do work while they're around and even while my husband's his job and it's me and the kids and I'll be doing work. But I also, the TV is usually on when that's happening. Like there's no, I'm doing it all perfectly and I'm doing multiple things at once. That's not how it works. I have, I'm really lucky. My parents are nearby and my mom works from home. So I have help when I need it and not everybody has that. And I think it's really important to acknowledge that not because, oh, go fix that. You have to have help. I mean, I do really think that finding ways to get support and to get help is really crucial. But also if you don't have help and if you, or if you have less help or anything like that, like knowing you still can't do it all. Like that's really the piece to walk away with is like, yes, I can solve parts of this by seeking help, accepting help, you know, not trying to do it all. But if I'm trying to do it all, I still have to know that as one individual person, I can't do it all. So that's, that's really important. Speaking of can't do it all. Do you hear my little one at the door? <laughs> I, I actually don't, <laughs> but I believe it. <laughs> Speaking of. Oh my goodness. Hi. <laughs> Speaking of. Yeah. I'm currently doing the nap time hustle. Guys. I usually don't do that. And that is what I'm doing as well. My oldest son's not here right now, but <laughs> my little one's down. I'm like, well, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> yeah. Building an empire while he naps. And sometimes it's perfect. And sometimes it's like it. this. And so yes. this is perfect for the conversation that we had today. Isn't it? <laughs> and yeah, Emily, I would love to know for us to tell the listeners where they can get in contact with you and yeah. support you and all that good jazz. Well, I would love to share that with you. I am on Instagram. I love doing the whole connecting on Instagram thing. You can find me at honestly, Emily Rose. And there's also a an Instagram for the podcast. It's at Worthy Mother Podcast. You can listen to my podcast. You can find it wherever, <laughs> wherever podcasts are found. But I love connecting. I love talking about all the things related to being a mom and existing in this world and in this life. So my DMs are open, all that good stuff. <laughs> yes. And after that journey that we just took together, is there yes. anything left on your heart that you feel called to share? I mean, I just, I want to thank you because I think, and and just anyone listening too, I think these conversations are so important, holding space for these conversations, but also like to choosing to tune in and to take the time for you to really like think about these things, to think about yourself as a mother and as a person. It's it's important and it's changing the world when we are allowing ourselves to just be more compassionate with ourselves. And so I just, I think that that is something so worth celebrating. And I don't think we stop to think about that enough. Like, oh, I'm just listening to a podcast, like whatever, but it really is world changing. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I just want to say that because I think it's so important to kind of just take that in and feel for a moment. Yes. Thank you for bringing that forward because I, I think we should be celebrating every day. I think yeah. that that is when we're ultimately vibing at our most high frequency. Yes. And there is so much worthy of our celebration. There's so much that we're doing right. Yes. Just so that you brought that forward. I'm like, yes, mama, like celebrate the wins small or big, it doesn't matter. Blast that music on, have yourself yes. a party and, and clap for your own dang self. <laughs> 100%. Thank you, Emily, for being here and sharing your heart with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Hi there, mama. Right now I am offering a powerful coaching container for free. So if you're going through something challenging right now and you need somebody to hold sacred space for you, this is for you. So what coaching is not? Coaching is not counseling. Coaching is a place where I help you get empowered by asking you powerful questions so that you can find the answers within yourself. Because at the end of the day, you know what you need. There's just a fog in the way. There's just a roadblock in the way, a thought, a mindset that is keeping you from doing the thing that's making the challenge seem all consuming. And what I do is I help you remove that fog so that you can see a little bit more clear. And I help you experience a lot more calm and peace and presence in your body. So this experience is happening right now, one hour with me. If you're facing a challenge, all you got to do is go to backroadscoaching.com in the contacts page and go ahead and book yourself an hour slot to come hang out with me. I would love to hold sacred space for you. Thank you for being part of the self-love movement. Your support and care matters here. Please be sure to subscribe, review, and share. 
and get your ultimate daily planner freebie today by visiting makewifefunpodcast.com. When you're ready to step deeper into my vibration and work together, go to backrosecoaching.com. Thank you again for listening. See you next time. Let me reintroduce myself and get honest with you. In 2020, I was motivated to change things up. The pandemic accelerated things that I was forced to close Josie Joe hair design after over a decade in business. I started my first podcast, Backroads, because I loved to travel and I loved the travel industry and also personal development that happens when you travel, especially as a solo traveler. I got burned out after winging it with my podcast for 21 episode and doing everything on my own. And I love to teach and podcasting was still tugging at my heart. And I got inspired by motherhood and started the current podcast, Make Life Fun, that you're listening to today. And this show, Make Life Fun, was inspired by my journey of motherhood where I just did not feel like I was going to be the mother that I wanted to be. I thought it was just going to be a hard job. I thought it was just going to be 21 years, 18 years of this like hard knock life because I've heard from so many mamas and so many moms how hard motherhood is. And so when I came up with Make Life Fun, it was like, can we make it fun? (laughs) Can we make it easy? Is there a better way to do this? And that gave birth to this show today that we are over 70 episodes now. So over two years in my business, I still felt like I was throwing spaghetti at the wall. Like I loved what I was doing and I loved how I was showing up and the mindset piece was on point, but it still was not working. I had done a lot of deep diving and personal development work and still nothing, right? And so I have to find a different way. I had to find a different tool. I had to find a whole new toolbox of tools. (laughs) And I realized that I wasn't in alignment with myself. I wasn't connected with my soul purpose. I wasn't, it wasn't a deep soul full body alignment. I was moving from my head space. I was moving from a place of this is what I should do instead of a heart led, soul led. This is what I'm doing because it feels so good. This is what I'm talking about because it lights me up. This is it. And when you move in that alignment and you're moving in that way of being pulled by your vision, it's a whole new way of being. And on the outside, I still looked shiny and happy. It looked like everything was working. It looked like I had everything together. And on the inside, I was completely having a totally different experience. I discovered that I had shut down parts of myself because I didn't feel safe. I've been called too much so many times in my childhood that I felt my power of that too much, I had to hide it. So that led me to feel trapped as a result of hiding that part of myself that is too much for some people who aren't my people. The too much part of me is who I am. The too much part of me is it's the part of me that makes me come alive. The part of me that gets curious. The part of me that wants to push the envelope. The part of me that wants to be $10 million Josie. That is my too much. And I had to go back and embrace that part and reclaim that part of me fully. And that was a mission (laughs) and a mountain that needed to be moved. And so it was a deep diving journey for the last eight months that I've been on. And the results so far that I've experienced from this deep dive is that my husband's gotten a raise and he's 2x his income. I'm a published author and an international bestseller. I'm showing up in my business like a boss, like a CEO, like a person who is completely in charge. (laughs) and completely owning the space that I'm in. I'm owning what I do. I'm owning how I do it. I am owning my authentic self, my authentic voice. I'm connecting to my whole integrated self. I've welcomed all of me here. I am so in love with all of me (laughs) and all of that. I have found all the parts of Josie that were criticized and beat down, the parts that were called too much, too sensitive. Those parts of me are here now and held, loved cherished. And I am more than anything following my soul calling. I am saying what I want to say. I am doing what I want to do. And I am lighting up day after day serving in this way. And what I want for you is to experience results like this. I want you to feel it up. I want you to feel so in love with yourself, so in love with your life. I want you to be walking your soul purpose. And I have openings that I've opened up for my powerful coaching experience. And I would love to invite you 
in to a powerful container where I am holding powerful space for you to experience the transformation for yourself, to experience what it is like to be moving in alignment, moving connected. And together we have a 60 minute session, this free 60 minute session with me. You're going to get clear on your soul aligned vision. We're going to dive deep and we're going to discover what is stopping you and blocking you. What is in your way? What is it that you can't see right now? And we're going to create a plan so you can take the next best step that has you taking powerful, aligned, soul-aligned action that will have you creating your vision with greater ease because it's, there's a difference from forcing and pushing versus alignment and flow. And I want to help you get into alignment and flow and whatever it is that you're creating right now, whatever challenge you're having right now, whether it is you're feeling like you need more self-love or you're feeling like you need help with your parenting, your motherhood, motherhood is hard. Hard. Whatever it is in your life right now that you feel is a challenge, I can hold space for you to look at it differently and create a plan that helps you break through that. So you know where to find me, backrosecoaching.com. Go to the contact page and you can go ahead and book yourself a free 60 minute session where I promise you it is going to be all about you. This is for you to share and for me to listen and hold the space that you need to find the answer that is already deep within you. So I invite you in. I, I will talk to you soon. And thank you for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for being a part of this community. Thank you for all the times that you have reached out to me and told me what you're liking about the show and giving me your feedback because they matter to me. I created this for you, mama, for you to gain wisdom, encouragement, and for you to feel like you're not alone. So have a beautiful rest of your day and I will see you next time. 